And you're started? Hello, I'm Doug Baggett. I am part of the Fred Log people. Are we, are we a people? I guess people. We're, we're, we are a people. All right. So, and uh, um, I'm going to give you kind of a, just a brief taste into some uh, retro computing that uh, that I uh, have been get, have been getting into, and I'll go into some of the reasons why. Um, so I'll be 54 next month. So I grew up in the 1980s. My first computer was a Commodore VIC 20. Uh, I had a, an Atari 2600 before that, but that was my first real computer. And when I booted it up, <clears throat> you know, all you saw was a blue and white screen and a, and a, black, and a flashing cursor. And my first video game was a cartridge called Adventure. And all it was was a two word parser. You had to do part of the part of the fun was you had to figure out how to tell the computer what to do in only two words or less. So get this, kill that, go north. And that was it. And uh, it was, uh, I mean, heck, back then, just changing the color of the cursor was, ooh. I mean, <laughs> you know, it was, it, was pretty, it was pretty crazy at the time. So, um, you know, computers were a lot simpler back then, but they were also quite interesting. Um, and I'm not going to go drone on for too long, because I, I actually could. But um, so recently, uh, so I have two kids, one of which uh, has a disability. Uh, he has a, a left-hand disability. And although, uh, you know, they amaze me every day with what they can do that I never thought that they could, you know, one of the things that I wanted to do is I said, you know, those old video game platforms, you know, they don't have a thousand buttons. They just have, you know, and this is an example of, you know, I'm sure everyone's seen an Atari joystick. This is actually not, this is a reproduction. Uh, this is what you played with on a, uh, on a, on a, on a Atari 2600 and, an, and a, um, uh, a VIC-20 and a Commodore 64. Uh, only this one has additional buttons, whereas the other one had one button and one thing. And so, you know, games had to be written for one button and one joystick. So there wasn't a lot of, you know, double tap, you know, hold this button and this one at the same time and move the move this back a couple of times. You didn't have any of that. So, uh, you know, I was thinking, I mean, you know, simpler games for my son uh, that he doesn't have to worry about uh, the Xbox controller, which really requires two hands. And you know his left hand is not very uh, mobile. He can use it, but it's difficult for him. All of that being said, like I said, he's figured out a way to use it. So, you know, what the heck, um, which is really cool. So um, anyway, uh, so I started looking into how I could bring some of these old games back to my my sons to play, and also because I'm old and you know reminiscing about how awesome the past was. Uh, you know, Peter was talking about that. You know the rose-colored glasses of, of when things were awesome in the 80s. So, uh, <laughs> so I, I started looking online. And the thing is, you know, there are a thousand different emulators for every single retro platform you could think of. And in the beginning, what you had to do is download each and every single emulator, configure them each and every single one, and just to get it to work. And they were finicky, some were slow, some were fast, some required, you know, almost no hardware at all. Some required, you know, you know, even say, you know, they recommended having a GPU. And I was like, ah, I don't want to do all that. So I just want something easy. So I looked at online and, you know, there are things like RetroArch and Batocera. And actually RetroArch actually runs under Batocera, which I'm going to go over. Um, and there's a, this project, this particular project, uh, about a Sarah project was forked off an earlier project, which is still running. So I'm going to, so here's my first slide just to show you. Like I said, I'm Doug Baggett. There's my email. There's my uh, uh, new month old Mastodon handle in case anyone's on Mastodon. If you're not, you should get on Mastodon. There's a lot of really cool Linux people there that post a lot. I mean, it's the masses haven't gotten there yet. So it's still kind of cool. It kind of reminds me of the early days of IRC. It's kind of neat. So, um, you know, that's what it is. Uh, so uh, this is a picture of me in 1985. Look at the hair and the smooth <laughs> teenager skin, you know, all starry eyed in Disney World about the future. <laughs> um, so what is Batocera Linux? It's a, an open source and free operating system designed for retro gaming, it allows users to turn their computers or other devices into retro gaming consoles, supporting a wide range of systems from classic arcade games to more recent consoles. Batocera is built on top of Linux and uses an emulation station as its front end to provide a user-friendly interface for navigating and launching games. It's particularly popular 
among Raspberry Pi users due to its ease of installation and comprehensive emulation support. Thank you, GPT-4. Uh, so uh, we've got to give credit where credit's due. You know, if I don't, when the AI becomes sentient, it will it will remember. So just keep that in mind. Uh, key features: wide compatibility. Uh, supports a vast array of gaming systems and platforms as detailed on the Batosura Systems Wiki page, which I will uh, bring up and show. User interface, it utilize, utilizes Emulation Station, which is a separate project, but which they've incorporated into it, um, which provides a, a graphical menu system, uh, some cool 80s-like music, which they've prepackaged in. Uh, controller support, it uh, includes tools like a, M E V M Mappy, M M Mappy, maybe that's how you pronounce it, uh, which inputs into a virtual keyboard. So, like if you're, if you have like a Commodore 64 and you want to be able to put it, type in something, it can bring up a virtual keyboard. Although, in my opinion, that's kind of, it's kind of wonky because a lot of C64 games you need the keyboard, and who wants to bring up a virtual keyboard in the middle of your game to to actually do something? So, uh, in my in my opinion, those types of systems you actually really do need an external real, or not a real keyboard, or a real maybe reproduction of the old C64 keyboard with the actual keys where they are so you don't have to worry about remapping right-hand function keys to, you know, it just gets really, really messy really quick. Um, customization offers UE settings, display options. There are a lot of options in Batocera for video modes, for video resolutions, for mm -hmm. wallpapers, for all sorts of you know, you can spend all day just mucking with the customization of, of that. And I haven't done it, but, you know, I'm sure many people do. Community support, um, actually maintained with the community that contributes to its development documentation. It's very, very accurate. And the wiki is very, very complete. And there are a lot of things that people have done, you know, with the distribution itself, adding things like, uh, like for instance, what I see the other day, uh, NVIDIA Stream, uh, you know, NVIDIA uh, game streaming, you can stream from your um, from your computer using NVIDIA stream to any other computer using a, uh, an open source client called Moonlight. And uh, there's actually a plugin for that. So you could run that on Batocera and then stream your retro game to any other computer if you wanted to. So that could be interesting. Um, Background in history, support from a project called Recall Box, which is still around. It's not based on any other Linux distro. Uh, I thought, you know, because usually projects like this are based off of Debian or based off of Red Hat or based off of Fedora, but this one is not. Although it does support, uh, it does support a flat pack, although I'm not quite sure what you would load that's in a flat pack in Batocera. I'm sure there are stuff that I just don't know about. I just didn't look into it. Um, emulation station is the, is the front end. Um, RetroArch, and I looks like I forgot a parens. Uh, RetroArch is uh, the front end for, um, well, it's a front end for emulators. It's kind of, so it's like the meta front end, and then there's just a front end. It's kind of weird. Duck Station is for PlayStation, Vice 364, and that's, those are just two. There's like a hundred million different emulators. So uh, there's quite a, quite a few. Um, many free game, games, uh, exist under, under um, uh, permissive copyrights. Um, you know, if you own the games, cartridge, stand up arcade, many of the ROMs are archived. It can be downloaded at archive.org. There are what are called ROM packs, which are available. These are like massive collections of, of old software. Um, you know, because what's happened is with a lot of the arcades, they've actually dumped the software from the ROMs uh, and they put them online. And the last thing about copyright. So here's what I'll say about copyright. Um, you know, respect copyright, do what's right and legal. Um, the question, and it, there is, and I'm not a lawyer, uh, there's a real question in the community as to whether or not, as to whether or not a game written for a platform 40 years ago in which the intellectual property was bought by a company who was bought by a company who was bought by a company who was bought by a company that hasn't enforced their copyrights and the stuff's been online for 25 years, whether or not that copyright is, is still in effect. There really hasn't been a court case to really solve that, to really answer that question definitively. 
obviously something like Donkey Kong, which is owned by Nintendo, is their intellectual property. Um, my advice to you is to do what's right and look at your own heart and mind and decide for yourself, you know, what the right thing is to do. Um, you know, uh, I will say that any games that I show you here today, I'm showing to you for demo purposes only. Uh, but, you know, like I said, you know, I mean, you know, if you own the cartridge for Asteroids, for the 2600, you know, you, there's no reason why you can't play it. Uh, there's nothing that I ever read that said you can only play it on your 2600. So that's all I'll say about that because I don't really have much any, anything more to say about it. So, and then demo time, fun. So what I'm going to do, is I'm actually going to I'm just gonna I'm just gonna kind of show you so I'm gonna do do this in two different ways. Um, I'm actually gonna show you I'm actually gonna show you um, the interface. I'm gonna actually run it in a VM to begin with. Now that's not the greatest way to play it and there's a couple of reasons why if you want to apply any sort of special graphic filtering so one of the things about old video game systems that people need to understand is they weren't on lcds you know they were on television sets and composite monitors with interlaced scan lines and a lot of people you know when they see a retro game they say ah oh, it looks so blocky well you have to remember that's not the way it looked on the old systems uh, with scan lines, a lot of times the programmers, when they would bitmap their graphics on a piece of graph paper or something, you know, what they would do is, you know, they, they would make it and they would look to see what it looked like with the interlaced scan lines. So that was part of their artistic creation, knowing how it's being displayed. It's kind of like uh, I read the old Star Treks, you know, one of the things that people saw when, when the old... Uh, Star Trek, the old series, came out on Blu-ray was they saw things like holes in people's shirts. There was one scene where Leonard Nimoy was walking down a, a hallway and he had a coffee stain in the middle of his shirt that you saw on the Blu-ray version. They had to like CGI that out. And the reason why it was, they didn't worry about that in the old days because they knew the type of displays that people would be watching the old series on. They knew it was going to be on low resolution televisions and black and white TV. When you know that, you only need to make your sets to the resolution, to the quality that the uh, you know that the displays that people are watching it on. In the same way, you know, graphics designers for these old games kind of they, they looked at they looked at what they what people are using, and that's what they designed it to. So, if you're going to play these games, my recommendation is to turn on some of these features so you can actually see it the way it is, or what you can also do is you can get, you know, a composite out and you can just, if you've got an old television set or if you've got an old TV, uh, you know, old computer monitor, like an old Commodore 1084S, you can plug it in, see it in the way that it was meant to be seen and not the way that it looks on a terrible LCD screen that's, you know, it's been, I don't know, expanded, you know, the resolution doubled and tripled and quadrupled and whatever. So let me go ahead and get Burt Manager up and running. And I'll bring it over here. And I'm going to go ahead and st actually, yeah, I should probably start it here if I can see it. Um, oh, that's right. Oh, no, that's okay. I, that's okay. I had, I had, uh, I had this, I had this, that's because I had the, so um, if you're rolling it in a VM, one of the things you have to do is you have to pass through the USB device. And, um, you know, if you don't have it plugged in, the pad, you know, it complains about that. So, you know, I'm going to plug in. So just to show you some of the devices in addition to this one, this is a Nintendo One, original Nintendo USB device. Uh, you can also get a Super Nintendo One as well. And, of course, I've got, you know, your typical Xbox controller. Which is actually harder to configure than these than this guy. It was you know, I had to try to I had to remap I had to go through the remapping process on this, and I'll actually go through that just to show you you know what you have to do. So uh, that's plugged in. So let's go ahead and try this again. All right, and if you wait, I can't I can't see it's why. There we go. View console. 
And go ahead. There we go. Can you see that online? Yeah. All right, cool. And let me see if I can't just increase the volume just a little bit because it's awesome. So anyway, I'm going to turn that down. So, so let's, let's hope this works. This work, this work. Ah, it does. Yay. All right. So this is emulation station. Emulation station is the front end, like I said. And here's where you'll see all of your games. Now, the only entries you will see are the ones that you actually have games in the, so there, there's a directory, and I'm just gonna show this, I'm gonna show it to you, with a folder for each one of the different platforms that you can emulate on mm -hmm. that Acera. The ROMs themselves that you get, which can either be, usually it's tar dot, either dot, dot seven zip or seven zip files or those zip files you can put into those directories and actually each directory has a text file which explains hey these are the types of formats that we accept so you'll only see the entries that you actually have games so like for instance if we go to main we can see we have two games we have atari we've got 585 we have commodore 64 we have one pc engine i don't know if i ever you, I've never seen PC Engine before, so I don't even know what that is, but evidently it was a thing at some point. And then Nintendo, I've got one. Super Nintendo, I've got one. And then Game Boy Advance. So the ones that come with Batistera are actually just free ones. They're not actual games from those companies. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go through quickly. So if you hit the, so that's quick access. Let's see here back i want to go to start menu so here's your main menu so it comes with cody built in so if you want to like watch videos or something you can do cody uh you've got your game settings you know you've got your video mode so you can change the different resolutions if you want you can change the different aspect ratio if you want game shaders this is what i was talking about earlier about playing it in the correct way um you know you can you can change oh, so I'm yeah so like so if you go to smooth game so if you if you you know if you, if you shader set so you can go to none curvature enhance flatten mega bezel there's all sorts of retro you know uh scan lines that's what i was talking about so i like using that one uh or you can just leave it to auto auto just kind of makes it you know and that'll apply to like all the games it will it will although you can change it for the individual game itself you know you don't have to do it in fact all each game can have its own controller settings and can have can have its own um can have its own uh, um uh, video settings so uh, i have not played too much of these i i plan on doing that if i can um so let's see here let's go back to that and let's see what else we got here uh, wait no i don't want to skip all right uh, I don't think playing or accessible. Hmm? I don't think the outplaying or <laughs> You're probably right about that. So uh, let's see here. So controller Bluetooth settings. Oh, I'll keep this the one button. All right. So control, there we go. So uh, control, you've got you know controller mapping. You can do all sorts of stuff like this. User interface settings. You can do different themes. Uh, you know, it just goes on and on and on and on. People, you know, people really do care about this a lot game collection settings. So when you add your stuff on there, you can group them. You can also scan them. It also will go out on the internet and will scan the individual games and give you the right icon. And I'll show you that in a second. Sound, network, scraper, updates and downloads, system settings. But you know, this is pretty, pretty standard stuff. Um, back, back. So let me just go ahead and show you an example of, say, a Nintendo, a Nintendo game. Uh, Super Nintendo. We'll do Super Nintendo. Actually, no, I want to do Atari. I was playing something this morning. So this is all the Atari games that, that I got out of the ROM pack that I just downloaded. So for instance, you know, what if I wanted to play a specific game? So like if I go to, let's see here. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> E.T., yeah, right. I never actually played that game. Oh, it's horrible. It yeah, well, you know, well, it was only made, it was made in like, you know. Literally part of the step. Let's see. Hold a second here. I can't see the bottom. Let's see here. 
Search. So one of the games that I played, so back in the 80s, one of the games that I played was a game called River Raid. And River Raid, River Raid was by was by Activision. And uh well, I'll see them. Look at that. Uh, I want to play that one. Also, there we go. Yeah, I've never actually played that one. I'm going to search now. I'm going to bring up River before I go into, into, into any other thing. So let's see here. Search is yeah, well. Are you sure? Yeah, I got it. So, um, um, yeah, you know, uh, well, and the thing is, you can't use the keyboard while it, you know, while it's like plugged in. We still have to be able to figure it out. So there's River Raid. So back in the day, what you would do if you were a cool kid in high school, what you did was you played these games for I don't know to get the score that you wanted to get. And then you get your Polaroid and you take a picture and you mail it in the physical mail. You know, because if you got the high score, they would send you back. The River Raid like master patch that you only could get if you got over a certain score. And then you then you, you, you have a box, you know, sew it to your sew it to your jacket. And then when you went to school, like you were the cool guy because like you spent three days getting eight hundred thousand on the master patch. <laughs> so oh man, you got the star master patch. Well, yeah. all right. So yes, was, was I a nerd? Well, yeah. Yes. Even better. When when no one was there, now everyone's there. So, anyway, so I'm just going to show you this real quick, and then I'm going to go into the, the the wiki, just to kind of show you. Actually, I'll, I'll go. I'll do a main one too. So this game, you know, you just kind of so you can see how blocky it is, and like I said, that's not the way that it actually looked. You know, it looked what? I absolutely have it. I absolutely have it. So let's see if we can play this real quick and start. So. Uh, you know, I may have the wrong controller. Yep, I have the wrong controller. I have the wrong controller. Question. Uh, yeah. If you were, I'm assuming you can also download play Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. In fact, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go into that. Does it? Oh, okay. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll wait for yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, well, before I, so what I'm gonna do now is, I just wanna, I just wanna go into. What I want to do is I want to go out of, and this is, by the way, this is a little bit wonky. It's kind of hard to get out of, to get out of the VM because you can't, let's see here. Where is that? No, it's fine. Uh, yeah. It doesn't, it didn't run great, but eventually they made a lot of the It's going to shut down for right now because I just, actually, I'm going to reboot because what I want to do is I don't want to show. There, so now I can get that. I couldn't get that before. You know, there's no hotkey in Vert Manager for a full screen. There's no like F11 or something. You have to actually use the mouse. Yeah, I know. But like, if you're if you're in full screen in like Vatasera, and you can't get to the top, there's no there's no like like view. Yeah, but it didn't work. It didn't work. Yeah, so I don't I don't know why. I did see it on your screen. Yeah. Exactly that I did. Right. Oh. So let me just look at something real quick. So this is let's see here. Let me look at the net the net for this. This is at because I want to show you guys the where you put stuff. Uh, let's see. Good options, network, network, network. I can't see because I'm looking sideways. Where is it? Where's the net? There it is. So it's 122.194. So a couple of things about about putting this thing on on you know on a network. Uh, the Batasura website, they're like this this distro is not. They said so. <laughs> security is out of the box is ludicrously terrible. I mean, you know, they enable root on SSH, and you know the password is root Linux. The you know it's root password Linux. So you know it's one of these things where you're like, um, okay. It is, you know, I mean, so let me just, uh, let's see here. Root, one by two, one by two, dot one, six, eight, dot one, by two, dot one, by four. Well, anyway, uh, hold a second. Something else I need to do first. 
I've got uh, I've got Tailscale running, and it's I do I use both. I use both. Um, um, DNS uh, works so also. Zero tier works better. I'm sorry, tail scale works better if you're in a double NAT situation, where zero tier doesn't. So you know they're both kind of they both kind of work the way work nicely. So there we go. Okay, so you know this is what you get when you when you log in via shell. But what I want to show you is so let's see here. There is a where is, it? Where, is it? Where is it? So if you go so under ROMs, you're going to see a thousand different folders, and as you can see, there are there are folders for every type of emulation. I mean, Atari Jaguar, you know, Game Master, NES. I mean, some a lot that I've never even heard of before are on here. Um, and if you go into each one, so let's say we go into uh, C64, for instance, since I'm wearing a C64 shirt, um, you'll see the info.txt. So, you know, it kind of tells you the extensions, the types of files that it will accept. So in the case of the Commodore 64, D64 images are Commodore 64 disk images. So um, you would need to put those in there. But there's a whole bunch of other ones. If I go to, if I go up to the uh, main uh, folder, and you can see I've got Golden Axe, uh, Space Invaders. Um, you know, if you look at that one, you know, you can see that you know it it accepts zip files uh, and seven zip files, and it tells you which main core. So there are different versions of main which uh, interact differently with different ROM sets. So it goes on and on and on. There's quite a bit. So um, what you do is you find the ROM packs and you dump them in these folders. And then you either reboot or there's an option under system settings to rescape your folders and boom, it just shows up. It's just there. And then you can choose it and you can play it. Um, let me just go to, I'm gonna bring up, um, no, I guess I'm going to doing it. All right, one second. And lastly, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go to the, the Batocera wiki page I'm going to bring it on over here, just kind of show you. The other thing is, to, you can also, uh, if, while you're in Batocera, let me see if I can bring it up here for a second. While in Batocera, so you don't necessarily have to, ask, you can, like I said, you can SSH and you can SCP stuff, um, but but you don't you don't have to. Um, there is actually an interface in my uh, mouse. There it is. You, right. Where's my freaking No, I know, but it's not coming up. No, but it's already open. Uh, there we go. Never mind. Thank you. It, I, it wasn't, so I don't know why. So, but if you press, uh, I believe it's F1. So if you go, uh, function. Yeah. So function F1. That is if it works. I mean, the key if you find yeah, I know, but it, it may not. It, it's it depends on how I may have to do send key instead. Yeah. Well, you, is it even going to work? Yeah. So I'm going to have to show. You know what? When I do bare metal, I'll show you. But basically, if you do, if you do F1, it'll bring up a file browser, a gnome, just your base, a basic gnome file browser, and you can stick in a, a USB stick, and you can just drag the files over. You don't have to S SFTP it if you don't have a network or something. And this is actually kind of important because a lot of people use Batocera or, or some of these retros on stand-up uh, uh, recreations of arcade games. Uh, my brother has like five of these sitting in his basement. And he can, you know, he can, he's got one arcade where you can play, yeah, let's play uh, Punch Out. With, you know, we can say body blow, body blow, not come out, you know? Or we can play Tempest, you know, with, with the spinner. Or we play Star Wars with the, you know, that he's got to sit down Star Wars. They're all recreations and they're all running on RetroArch or Batocera or one of those other emulators. So, you know, having the ability, you know, on a system like that, which isn't networked, to be able to just plug in a USB stick and it copy it over is kind of important. So, but let me go back to the Batocera website because I want to show you, I just want to give you an idea as to what 
the resources that are available. And we'll maximize this for a second. And so what you can see is, you know, they've got your main navigation page. They kind of explain about how to install it. So it comes on a basically, you know, it's like any image file. Actually, when you download it, it's an it's it's an it's a .img.gz file. So you know, if you're using uh, using something like um, uh, what's it called, Belana Etcher, uh, Belana Etcher will take a .gz file a .img.gz file and create a USB stick. If you're take if you're using you know anything else like DD, you'll need to to, to gun zip it first. You know, before you actually do it. Um, when you write the image to your USB stick, no matter what size it was, does, the first time you plug it in, it expands the file system to take advantage of all the space. The other thing is that you need to know is this is not a portable stick. Once you've used it in one computer, that computer is where that stick will run. You can't take it out and go to another computer and plug it in. I, I know, I was surprised. I tried that two days ago. I was like, wait a second here. This is running in my laptop in here. Why is it running over here? It just doesn't work. Um, I don't know why. I'm going to have to look into that. Maybe they're doing some sort of hardware scan, you know, to kind of optimize for what you've got. I don't know. So there's, you know, keep that in mind when you're, you know, when you're making your sticks. I find that, you know, a 64 gigabyte stick is probably good enough. But if you want, you know, 10,000 games, you know, maybe you want a 128 gig stick. And of course, USB sticks are so cheap nowadays. You know, you can get a 256 stick for probably, what, $20 or something like that. I mean, it's pretty cheap. You can install it to a hard drive. In fact, I plan on doing this. I've got an old 12-year-old laptop that I want to install this on for the kids. So you can do that. It doesn't require a huge amount of CPU. Uh, the only time that you might consider using a higher end system is if you're emulating something like uh, Nintendo 64, something that renders some sort of 3D. Uh, you're going to want something a little bit more beefy. And if you want to use some of those effects with scan lines and you want to have full frame rate, okay, you're going to want something a little bit more powerful. It will run on, let's see here, let's go up here. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? I'm gonna just go to download so I can show you. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? So it doesn't just support Intel. It supports Raspberry Pi. It supports a bunch of others. Let me just look. Yeah, thank you. I should. I should just leave this folder. Just let me just see. Now, as you can see, I am in no. Part like my, my brother probably knows more about that Sierra than I do because he's been playing around with, with his with his arcades, and I just started looking at it a couple of weeks ago. But as you can see, if you go to choose a P, choose a PC, so if you can, you know, you can choose you know all sorts of stuff. You can choose you can even choose just a 32-bit PC. So you've got an old computer lying around, which, as we know, you know, the kernel, the Linux kernel, is not going to be uh, you know supported, you know, uh, for just about anything anymore. Uh, let me, just look for a second here. Where is that's working? Let me just go to go to bapserver.org for a second. The main, the main page. So if you just hit get Batasera, so you've got your laptop, you've got your Steam Deck, you've got your Raspberry Pi, and then you've got for handheld consoles, you know, for you know, for different Raspberry Pi boards. As you can see, they have you know, basically made it available for just about every, you know, SBC, you know, single board computer you can think of. And, you know, it really does make it quite, you know, quite handy. And I'm sure a lot of these boards are used in stand-up arcades, is, you know, in some of the modern ones. So, you know, uh, if we go back to the documentation, uh, you know, there's, uh, you know, there's just a lot to do. I don't have too much more to talk about except that to say that be careful when it comes to controllers. So one of the things I found is that although you can remap the buttons from one controller to another, it gets really hairy really quickly. So like the difference between a Sony controller and say an Xbox controller with the buttons and you know what's like, so the base buttons that this kind of maps for is your basic uh, gamepad. Or your basic Xbox gamepad. And sometimes A is not, A on yours is not A there. 
sometimes, you know, what's so like it may say we want you to map the left button to, to this to the left button to that controller, but you but then you'll go into the game and it'll say press the A button, but the A button is not in the same place. So what I've decided to do, and it's a little bit more expensive, is you know what I just told my sons, look guys, if you want to play a 2600, this is the controller you're gonna use. If you're gonna play a Nintendo game, this is the controller you're gonna use. If you're gonna play something like you know, an old, you know, say an older Xbox game or something, you know, this is the one. I haven't bought a Nintendo 64 controller yet, but I'm going to. Uh, it just makes it so much easier than having to fight the, the rebapping. Uh, I mean, it's just, it's just, you know, it's like, uh, you know, so, you know, um, but that's all I really have to say. Uh, does anyone have any questions? Uh, yeah. uh, kind of on point earlier. So, um, let's say you wanted to play something like PlayStation 2. Does it automatically dump the BIOS in there? So that'll yeah, that's a good point. So some games require BIOS, and you know, you do have to find it somewhere. You know, and you know, the question is: so, so if you own a PlayStation Two, are you going to tie it to the BIOS? I have no idea. That's where it's buried. I don't know. Some of them, and this has to do with copy protection. You know, um, so you know, you know, I've concentrated on some of the older stuff that doesn't do that sort of thing. And of course, with those later systems, you're going to need a much more beefy system. Uh, now, this system might do it. I mean, this is a 2018. It's got an Intel UHD 620, which is not the greatest, you know, integrated chipset in the world, but it's probably good enough to emulate a Nintendo 64. So even then, yeah. it's not perfect because of the yeah. optimization. So. Yeah, yeah. But um, you know, the other thing is, uh, depending on how hardcore you are, you know, uh, there are people that notice. You know, microsecond latencies that, ah, when I was on my original Atari, I can be exact, but I'm on this emulator and it's like point, point 0.1 millisecond, point zero 0.01 millisecond slower. And I can tell that when I try to kill the, you know, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me see if I, well, actually, let me go ahead and uh, actually, you know what? I brought a USB stick. So I can't really play it in the, ver in the VM. So let's go ahead and, um, and do, and do the, the bare metal if we can. Uh, you're going to have to point your thing, and I'll, 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 I'm going to go ahead and end my. What I'm going to do is, so I'm, I'm just going to, I'm going to exit. I'm just going to shut down. So while you're doing that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. The fact that they are so available now through things like emulators, mm -hmm. um, online, even if you play some games online. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, some people have actually started to develop a new game for
Can everyone hear me online? Yep. Yep. <laughs> Testing what? Can you hear me? There's there's no voice there's no voice lip. So this is going to be kind of hard to play a game with a Do you have a Yeah, let me give it a try cuz like it's going to be kind of hard to This is what I deal with every day at work, by the way. This is, Ted, this is why I went back into the Linux world. I went out of AV at work. I went out of it, out of it. Out of video conferencing, out of AV. I don't want to do that anymore. I want to go back to the command line. <laughs> I want to sit there and not have to deal with any customers. <laughs> so, I don't know how I got sucked into that world, but I did. Maybe it's because, you know, I'm not a nice guy and I raised my hand and I said, I'll do it. You know, that's what happened probably. <laughs> I that that's what that's what my buddy in the Navy said. Oh, the Navy, this never again too. volunteer yourself. Yeah. And people hear me online? Yeah. Yay. <laughs> And like I said, I'm not going to drone on for too much longer because I'm sure we've got other stuff to talk about. But um, can you guys hear me online? Can, uh, yay! All right. So what I've done, and while you guys didn't hear me, is so we booted up uh, Batasera in bare metal mode. So this is running right now on an X1, on a sixth gen Lenovo X1 Carbon. Uh, so it's circa 2018. I got it for like I don't know a couple hundred bucks. So um, you know this is like way overkill for this. I mean, you could you could use a laptop from literally 12 years ago, you know, and for anything but Nintendo 64 and PlayStation 2, it'll run just fine. So, you know, it's a great thing, like if you've got kids or something and you, you're like going on a trip and you want to like have something for them to play, you could you could take that old laptop with you and a couple of controllers and have this loaded on it and you've got yourself instant console. Or you could take a Raspberry Pi with you too and plug it into the monitor, so. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you the one game that uh, I'll show you one game that I finished as a kid, which is Golden Axe. Uh, Golden Axe is uh, now it hasn't, as you can see, the icons. So I never, when I loaded these ROMs, I did not scrape the, I did not tell it to scrape the internet yet. So as a result, you know, you don't see any icons. Uh, sometimes if you have a large set and you have it scraped, not all of them are going to are going to are going to populate. And there's like four or five different databases full of images for, that it can pull from. So you kind of have to try each one in the settings if it, not all of them show up. So I'm going to go ahead and start Golden Axe. Perfect, like, yeah, yeah, it'll be something. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Like 20 of the same data. So I don't know how this is going to work on this controller, but we're going we're gonna to see. Uh-oh. Uh, <laughs> so... Hey man, I remember that. So like, so here you go. So we'll do start. All right. And I'm going to choose. I always like uh, this guy right here. And you know, this so this is an interesting game. So I think it's interesting because it's violent, and it's as a 12 year old, you know, the, the more violent the better. So, you know. You know. So this is just an example. Now, one thing to keep, like I said, these are the, this is the original software that came off of the arcade itself. You know, this is not, this is not, you know, a, a remake or anything like that. Everything is exactly the same. And, you know, and, and I, don't, I, mean, I don't even remember how to play. Uh, uh. Uh, what else is nice is you don't have to put up with region locking. Before, if you wanted to play Genesis games from Japan, you had to know this a Mega Drive. And you can see how, uh, yeah. Yeah, so there's one. Let me see if I bring up so another one. Let's try uh, Space Invaders. So this is an interesting one right here. So this is the original. This is the original Space Invaders. Uh, the original Space Invaders. Now what they've done here, you can see they've kind of, see they've got a bezel on the outside, and uh, you know, you know they've got kind of a background. I don't think there was a background. I don't remember a background when I played it. 
Yeah. So, you know, and I don't know, maybe, maybe on some of the arcades there, maybe on some of the arcades, there was a, um, you know, maybe there was, um, you know, like, like a, like a, like a, like a piece of paper overlay or something. I don't know. You know, sometimes you'd, sometimes you'd see, like, for instance, if you sat down, like in some of the bars and some of the sit down arcades, sometimes you'd have like an overlay, like an actual painted overlay on the glass. And maybe that was something like, maybe this is what they're alluding to in this. I don't know. But this is, it's totally authentic. You know, you can play it. So there's another arcade. Oh, let's see if we can find some other stuff to play here, too. And then, that one, I think, said the Blue Fire Sonic. Yeah. Yeah. So that ROM pack was missing something. So, you know, you, you know when you're looking for the software online, you got to find the stuff that, you know, you're, it's going to be a hit or miss. And like when I downloaded a ROM pack, one of the things I found was it had every version. I, I just wanted to play Galaga, all right? There was like 18 versions because every, there was the Japanese version, there was the Romanian version, there was, there was, you know, there was version one, version two, version three, there was Namco version one, version two. I mean, you know, and so, you know, you end up, what I ended up doing is, you know, using regular expressions and filtering stuff out so that, okay, I just want, you know, I just want I just want one. I want the one that's English, and I want of I, I want revision one. Uh, some of them I've been hacked to you know to make it easier or not as hard. So when you get your ROM pack, you're gonna you're gonna want to go through it. Otherwise, if you don't, if you just dump it in your folder, you're gonna have so many just ones that are just filling up your page. It makes it hard to find what you want. So like you know, here's Pac-Man. We'll do that, and then I'll go to some, well, maybe something else. I remember that boot up. I, I didn't see it that often, but you know. But let's see. So. Something I learned by watching the show is how much actually the Nintendo system that will like maintenance mode only. Yeah, I yeah. I to do all kinds of things that I did no clue the actually had. So. I mean, this is, you know, this is totally, you know, it's totally, uh, you know, totally authentic. And even, set, you know, the sound is right. The speed looks fine, which is usually the problem. It usually works way too fast. It was not really quite. Well, you know, uh, it, a lot of it has to do with the, with the CPU, you know, speed. Um, you know, yeah. You know, I mean, like, one of the things, you know, if, if you go later in the retro scene and you're trying to, to uh, to emulate, say, DOS games from the 90s. You know, the, if you try to run free DOS with a game from the 90s on a modern computer, because the clock speed is so high, you have to, you have to go in there, you have to run a utility to actually say, no, I, only, I want you to only run at like one megahertz. Don't do King's Quest with a high clock speed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're, you're like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, so like, you know, because I've been wanting to, to, I never, one of the games, I was a big RPGer. One of the games I never played because I, I had moved to an Amiga and they didn't have it at the time was Ultima 6. And that's a difficult game to play under DOS because it's got memory, it's just, it uses memory in a weird way, and uh, it's difficult. Ultima 6 and then Ultima 7 and 8, which are really classic. So let me just go ahead and back out to the back and let's go back. So, you know, so like I said, let me go back also again. Back. Let me go to. Since I have a Nintendo controller, let me go back to just regular Nintendo. Ah, I guess I don't have anything on it. Huh. That must be a homebrew. Yeah, that's that's a homebrew game that yeah. just they just threw in there. But um, everything I know. <laughs> everything, everything. Wait. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> All right, we can go back. Ah, I did it again. Hold on. Reset. I've actually played it more than you, Big Fred. All right. And back is this way. I'm just going to show you some of the games. So, like, you can, you know, and you can actually go to different manufacturers if you want. You know, so it's kind of cool. Well, you can go this way if you want, but go to Super Nintendo. So, you know, it just goes on and on and on. You can play any game you want. And, you know, you just have to understand that, you know, it, it, you know, some of these games you can just jump in, but some you can't because of the control. Because you get, I don't know what the freaking key comp, what the buttons are for, you know, and you got to look online to find out. So, you know, but 
anyway, uh, I don't think I have too much else to battle of the Grand Prix. Battle to the no, well, no, well, no. This, this is what we want to play. Right? <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna play Be Beavis and Butthead. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna start that because I've never seen that before. And oh man, okay, whatever. I want to see what that does. <laughs> no, the problem is, is that, is that I, I usually go by the thing at the bottom, and you know I'm not looking at it. So. What was the game with like the giant baby? And it's about to play. And there's like aliens. I got, I got one question for you. Play on here, and nobody's gonna get the preference. But can you play Hong Kong '97? You know what? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Beavis and Butthead are not role models. They're not even human. <laughs> Don't try this at home. <laughs> there was someone yeah, that, yeah. That died. He said, don't try it at home. Don't try it at home. <laughs> <laughs> He's going, oh, oh, oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> the, the, the thing about Beavis and Butthead is, I don't, you know, so if you, didn't go, if you didn't grow up in the 80s, what you didn't know is they are the caricature amalgamation of every metalhead that I ever knew in 1986. I, I, mean, I mean, I knew guys that like, you could tell that they did a little too much pot because they're crispy around the edges. So like, if you go like this, they're like, their reaction time is like a half second behind. You're like, it's like what, what? And they talked like that. They're like, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh. They just, it's just the way they talked. It was weird. So yeah, 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 yeah. So anyway, let me get back out. So. <laughs> I'm gonna have to play this game now because it looks, it looks fun. It looks fun. So, all right. So that's all I have to present. I used way more time than I thought I would because I didn't really think that I had that much. It's just really deep. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. Fine, fine. No problem on a free. I think I barely played it into this. But but it really depends on it really depends on what you're emulating. Um, you know, like for instance, if you're emulating uh, an Atari Twenty Six Hundred, you could probably do that on a zero. You know, if you wanted to. I mean, and people have, you know, but that would be kind of insane. But you could, you, you could do it on a Raspberry Pi Zero if you wanted to. Because the emulation you can have yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, the the overhead is, you know, what it's emulating. You know, the the, the faster the processor, you know, the that it's emulating, you know, the heart, the more overhead you're going to need. But the reality of the matter is, the games, the systems, unless you're emulating something from 2003, you know your laptop from 2012 is going to do just fine you know now like i said you know the, they don't support running it in a vm and i wish they did um uh, if they would just use the qxl drivers maybe in batasera yeah you could probably do that i mean if you did a pass through like if you did a like gpu pass through or something like that basically the cpu that you have is yeah 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 well you could also just like yeah, yeah. It's not going to be configured. It's a little more work. Yeah. So that's the thing to keep in mind too. So emulation station is a separate project. All right. You can download that. What Battle Sarah has done is configured it so you're not spending three days trying to get it to work. But even with Battle Sarah, you're going to spend an afternoon. Mostly on controls. Mostly on the control. And but you understand you understand why I went the way I did. I mean, that's, I mean, it's just so much easier. Just use the controller that it was meant for. Don't try to use, a, you know, an Xbox controller for a Nintendo 64 game. It's going to be pain. It's going to be painful. Sometimes what you can do, and some people have actually put the work into doing games you want to play, and like, man, I can't figure out the controls. Some people will actually create and upload a controller config file. Yeah, I've seen those. And it's very easy. Some, some work, some are not work. Some are trash, yeah. So. That is my presentation. Thank you for, 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 and you know what? If any of you out there are, you know, are, know more about this than me, please tell me so I can ask you questions because, you know, save me some time. Listen to this dude. Steam Deck is like your one and done for retro gaming. Do you have a dock to put it in? Like that's a good point. Maybe I need, maybe I just need, maybe that's a justification, you know, for the Steam Deck. So, um, yeah, well done. So thank you. Uh, I like most of my presentations. Uh, you know, this one uh, I uh, I procrastinated until the last week.
And then, uh, and I hadn't touched Batisera in two months, so I'd forgotten everything I'd learned two months ago. So I had to go back and relearn it. And then, of course, you know, burning USB sticks, I ran through, you know, I was like, oh, I'll just put on another USB stick. And then, you know, three USB sticks in a row were bad. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I was like, what does that happen? So, you know, I mean, that, I mean, you know, that I know that's what I'll end up doing. But, you know, the thing is, is it, you know, uh, so, um, you know, my kids, they, they don't care. They just want to have fun. And this is cheap. I like cheap. <laughs> So, I mean, I mean, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to go my brother's route where he's buying, you know, stand up arcade machines. I'll just go over to his house and use his, <laughs> you know, but, but this is easy enough. And in fact, you know, if you want to go, you know, we're talking about controllers uh, and it's actually almost bigger in Europe in some ways. So in, in England and in Germany, you can actually buy, there's a thing, I forget what it's called, it's about 100 bucks, but it has an actual, it's an actual arcade controller with arcade buttons. Uh, and there's a rat, you can fit a Raspberry Pi in the box itself, you know, and then you can put Batocera on it and then, and then just take it wherever you want and plug it into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I'm, you know, because, because I, you know, I, you know, emulation versus, ha versus having the same thing. I mean, you know, like the 8-bit guy made, you know, he's got his new 8-bit computer that he made. And, you know, one of the design decisions that he asked, that people asked that he had to grapple with is, well, do I just want to put everything on an ASIC, you know, a, you know, a programmable ASIC and just, you know, and just do it? Or do I want to actually have individual chips, you know, do it the old, do it old school? And he decided to do it old school because part of it is learning. And that's one thing about old computers. It's kind of like old cars. You know, my old brother, he owns a 79 Honda Civic. And he used to say, look, I can take that whole thing apart and understand every piece of it and put it back together again. My modern car, forget it. You know, there's too much electronics involved. And there, there are parts where only machines can get in there. Human hands not even designed. Old Commodore 64, you can actually see every trace. You can, you can, the documentation as to what every trace does, and you can, you can use your oscilloscope, and you can, you can look at, you can, you look at the voltages. Try doing that on a modern computer. You need a microscope just to see the edges on the motherboard. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you wouldn't be able to see all the layers of the board, because it's a multi-layer board. So, you know, um, you know, those old computers do have something to teach. You know, they teach you about, about, look, you know, an Atari 2600 had 4K of memory. It was in two 2K banks. And when a software was released, it had to be perfect. If there was bugs in it, it didn't sell because there were no patches. And 4K of memory, what is it, about eight? 4K, is that like what, Peter, like eight sheets of paper of code? 4K, something like that? I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean, and it was all straight machine code, you know? It was just an assembly, you know? or. Yeah. yeah. It's amazing. Like some of them you can use video games. Yeah. You may see some noise on the side. They have a little code, but they have to put something there that looks cool to so visualize what's in memory of the machine. It's really cool if you have it. Um, and there's this one kind of on that note where they just gave a 